This is the second part of the story of the great air attack on the convoy to Malta. The cameras go right through to the gallant island fortress and you will see the unloading of supplies. But first, observe how great a fleet was the escort. No underestimate here of the hazards that were likely to be encountered. Capital ships in case of attack by Axis surface vessels and several aircraft carriers. The most important object was to get those reinforcements off to Malta. Therefore, at a certain point, aircraft left the mother ship to fly the rest of the journey. And then the attacks began, attacks which continued almost incessantly to the end of the voyage. attack followed in the evening. No damage was done, but some enemy planes were shot down and when you see the barrage you don't wonder. day the struggle was renewed with awful intensity. It is hardly possible to imagine the fearful strain of sailing under such continuous bombardment. It is hardly possible to imagine how men can endure such a test and come through it ready for the next job. It's as well to remember now that such experiences must eventually tell their tale. After the war, only the best must be good enough for them. Let's decide that now while they're right in the picture. can't come through this kind of thing and stay the same. There'll be many faces with deep lines in them after the war. There'll be young men with eyes that look as if they've seen too much. Nearing the destination at Malta, the convoy was met by MLs that came out to assist in the escort work. These little ships did a wonderful job, both against air attacks and an anti-submarine patrol. A hit was scored by torpedo on the tanker Ohio, a ship full of oil, most precious and most vulnerable. She was next hit by a Stuka. Incredible it sounds, but the crew put those flames out and brought her into Malta. Always there was the danger from under the sea, but those MLs rolled off their depth charges and shook the ocean bed. In the brief lulls between attacks, the crews grabbed a quick meal. For hours on end, they had no rest, but they kept going on good old British duff. The cameraman who took most of this story was Douglas Hardy. At another unspecified point, the big ships of the escort went back to Gibraltar. Enemy seaplanes and e-boats made some attacks during the night, and the following day, continuous attacks resumed. Nineteen waves in six hours. Five, six, twelve, or twenty planes in a wave. In the meantime, under protection of the light forces, the convoy came slowly towards Malta. Their ranks were sadly thinned out. This island can only be kept going at considerable sacrifice in men and material but the reinforcements and supplies that got through were sorely needed. Watch these ships come into harbor at Valletta. Picture in your mind the feelings of those brave people on this indomitable rock as they see the relief come in. Precious food to sustain them, ammunition to help them hit back as they have done for more than two years. Never has there been such a story of heroism and dogged endurance. It almost makes the whole terrible war seem worthwhile. 
just to learn that there are people with this kind of courage.